What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be installing probably one of the most cost effective and best upgrades you can make for your ProMaster. It's going to be this Nylite light bar and two of these little spot floodlights. This is the stock headlights and now for the light bar. <laughs> it just lights everything up, it's crazy. The best part about this install this whole kit with the light bar and the two floodlights are only $69 on Amazon. I'll put a link below. And if you want to make it even cheaper and you want to just do the light bar, then it's $43. There's another link for a cheaper one, but that doesn't include all the wiring. So you want to avoid that one. So stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So like I said, it's $69 for the light bar and the two floodlights. And you can certainly do the install for that. And you can bolt those directly to the vehicle. But if you want to make it a little bit of a cleaner install and make the install a little bit easier, I have two other brackets that I purchased and I'll put a link for these as well. This is a aluminum license plate holder. So it's going to go behind the license plate like that and then you'll be able to bolt the light bar right right to this so you don't have to make any um, any additional holes in the, in the vehicle and it's gonna give it a, more of a cleaner install look. So I'd recommend getting this bracket as well. It kind of has a cool uh, look like it's like a push bar. However, it's, uh, it's just made out of aluminum so I don't think it's gonna offer much uh, strength in terms of uh, knocking in the things. And also these little brackets for the two floodlights these are gonna clip right onto the back side of the hood, and that's gonna make this a lot easier to install as well. I'll have a link for everything in the description. So that's everything you're going to need for the install. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove this plug here. You can see I'm using a flathead screwdriver to kind of pop it out, and that's going to be the access through the firewall so that you can pass the wires through. So this plug just pops right out. Once you remove the plug, take a coat hanger and you're going to want to fish the coat hanger through the firewall so that we can use this to pull the wires through. So once the coat hanger is through the firewall, just go into the driver's area and try and find where it popped out. It's going to be right behind the brake pedal is where it pops out. Okay, so next we got to remove this panel. There's three screws, one or two screws, one, two, and a 10 millimeter bolt right here. So now that that's out of the way, you should be able to see coat hanger coming through right here. It's kind of hard to get the camera in here to show you, but you can see that daylight there. Coat hanger's in there. There we go. Okay, so now that I have the coat hanger through, I can tie my wire for the switch to either side of uh, the coat hanger and pull it through either way. So I'm gonna need to pull it through from this end because I've got the relay here and all this thick stuff that needs to stay on this side. So I can uh, electrical tape the wires to the coat hanger and pull them through a few at a time here. Okay, so we should be able to run the wires down through here 
into the battery compartment, connect the positive and negative. And then the second wire will go up through here and we'll mount the switch right here, hopefully. If that's too hard to get to, then I'll do it here. So first I'll take this apart and see what it looks like behind here. Okay, so this is really easy to get to. This shouldn't be a problem at all. So we actually have a fuse panel here, which we could tie into instead of going all the way to the battery, but then we need to get one of those piggyback fuse connectors. So it shouldn't be too hard to run it to the battery, so I'll just do that. So I'm just running the wires where they need to go approximately loosely with some zip ties and uh, I'll be able to tighten these up once I actually install the lights. You can see the second second ones here. Uh, I'm just leaving things loose for right now until I get everything where it needs to be. And for the light bar, I'm gonna run it down this way and zip tie it to a bunch of things and I'll have it come out right here. I'm just making sure to keep it away from any moving parts, the fans, the belts, the engine, so it won't get snagged on anything. Unless you want to cut the wires, there's really no way to get this grommet back in. So what I did, I cut some of this edge protector trim. I'm not really sure what it's called. I'll put a link in the description for this. I use this whenever I run cables through any sharp metal. This just pr protects it. It's a little rubber, hard rubber stripping. Probably can't see it, but I've got a piece stuffed in there on the edge. Now we need to gain access to the battery, which is located right under this panel. And you can just use a quarter to give these a half turn. To undo them. You can use a screwdriver also, but the screwdriver can't reach this one under here, so it's better to use a quarter. So all we need to do is connect the red positive and the black negative. Pretty simple to do. But before we do that, we want to remove the inline fuse here. That way, once we have everything connected, then we'll put the fuse back in so we won't have any short circuits or anything. Just pop this out. That's a 15 amp fuse. Okay, we're gonna take a three quarter inch drill bit. And we're gonna pop through right here. Perfect. Now we'll take our wire, feed it through that hole. It's going to be the hard part. are out. On the switch there's three terminals. Two silver, one brass. The brass goes to the black. That's pretty important. White goes in the middle.
red goes to the outside silver. Now we should be able to push this switch right in. Need to shave a little bit off with the razor blade knife. All right, I just took the razor blade knife and kind of notched away a little bit of that plastic that kind of melted on there when it when I drilled. And I think this is gonna squeeze in now. There we go. It's definitely gonna be snug. Which is what we want. I don't want this moving around. All right, that switch is in. Wire's coming down through here. I put this panel back on. It's coming behind there, through here. So now I'm gonna screw this panel back in. This thing's good. And then we'll make our connections on the battery. Once you remove the license plate from the vehicle, you can kind of reuse those same two holes for the first two screws of the bracket. And then I just use some three quarter inch self drilling screws, and I think I used eight of them to hold the bracket up. And it's an extremely lightweight bracket that should be more than enough to hold it. But I made sure to put all the screws in a spot where the license plate, once I put it back on, will completely cover and hide the screws so you won't see them. Okay, next we're gonna add the brackets to this light bar. You can see there's some uh, uh, nuts in there that just kind of spin around. And we're going to take our bracket, it's going to mount like that. So this will go here. So put the bracket kind of like that and take one of the short bolts that comes in the kit, not the long ones. I've got a washer, a lock nut, and the bolt. And we're trying to get this onto the first nut that's in the track here. Okay, correction, before you put this on, you need to take your long bolts. You won't be able to get it in after. The longer bolts, stick those up this way. Those won't be able to spin in here. The way it's set up, you can't access that bolt afterwards. So put that bolt in first. Should look like this. You got the bolt, the longer bolt sticking out, and got this loosely in place so I could still slide it wherever I need it. Do the same on the other side. So those two long bolts are just gonna fit right in the holes up there. And you can kind of slide it around where it needs to go. So you're gonna have to uh, mark exactly where these lined up with a little marker and then pull it off and tighten that bolt behind there. And also you wanna get the angle you want of your light because you're not gonna be able to adjust this once it's bolted down. If um, later on you decide you need to adjust this, it's not a big deal. You just undo these bolts here. You can adjust it and put it back on. You will need to take it off to uh, rotate this the angle you want. From what I've seen, these are extremely bright and they're gonna kind of cover a big area. So you don't need to have it pointed exactly at a specific angle. It should cover a lot of area. So I'm just gonna mark this. I'll take it off, I'll tighten it down. Then I can put the license plate on. Then we'll make our connections should be good to go on the light bar all right I've got this bolt here tightened down where it needs to be so before I mount this I'll go ahead and make the electrical connection first that'll give me a little more room to work with so now it's simple we'll just connect the positive and negative of the light bar to the wire that we ran earlier and this is just loosely sitting in place here I'm gonna remove this zip tie and pull the wire back through so it's hidden back in there. That's why all the zip ties I have are loose here right now until I make the final connection, have the wires where they need to go. 
and I'm going to cinch them down and cut off the excess. The kit comes with everything you need. It comes with these connectors to connect on here so that we can just plug into here. I have some additional heat shrink I'm going to use and some electric tape to protect that connection a little bit further. When you make these connections, make sure you push the rubber into each other and then use a lighter to melt the shrink wrap. It should give us a nice watertight seal. So next we're gonna put the bracket for the two floodlights and what we need to do is orientate this that way, not this way, that way, and unscrew this Allen key right here. This is going to clip onto the hood and bolt that in that orientation like this. So that should look like that and tighten it pretty firmly but still to the point that you can still kind of swivel it if you really kind of force it so that you can orientate your lights later on where you want them. This is just sitting in place, it's not fully mounted yet. It's really hard to get behind here with the Allen key. So what I did was I removed these two screws right here. Once you remove those two screws, you can actually pop this entire panel out. So I'm gonna recommend fully assembling this before you put this panel back on. It's gonna make it a lot easier to, to get to this bolt and everything. So I'm gonna tighten this down, then I'll put the panel back on, then I'll make the electrical connection. Okay, everything is installed. All the wire connections are made. This one I ran this way, and it's gonna just compress here and seal up like that. And the only thing left to do now is put in the fuse and check if the lights are working. It should be working now. Okay, I just popped the fuse in here and the fuse holder. And when you flip the switch, they are working. When you turn them on, the light uh, comes on here on this switch, and then it stays off when it's off. Everything's working great. You can see here, everything's lit up. And the only thing left to do is take this out on a dark road and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, check it out. Now I'm gonna show you what the headlights look like. So this is the stock headlights. This is no headlights at all. Stock headlights. That's the brights. And this is the regular stock headlights. And now for the light bar. <laughs> it's just insane. It's like daylight. This is the stock headlights and that's the light bar. And it's a really wide field of view, you can see. All the way off to the side here. Completely lights everything up. All the way, all the way over here. This is probably one of the best upgrades you can do to your van. I recommend everybody do this. I'm definitely going to be putting this in on every van I build from now on. This is just one of the best things you can do. It's great. Stock headlights. Light bar. Okay, so here's one more clip. I'm on a regular street with a street light. And these are the regular stock headlights. This is the headlights off, this is the stock headlights, and now for the light bar. <laughs> it just lights everything up, it's crazy. Here are the brights, regular headlights, brights, and the light bar. It's like you can see every little detail. 
really wide range of sight. It's amazing. Alright guys, that'll do it for this episode. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. And there's a lot more to come, so if you don't want to miss out, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.